Hey everyone, I've been getting a lot of questions about um, how to do jump rings on stained glass without them falling off. <laughs> and also how to do the wire hangers that I do, um, which you can see on this piece. So how to do these and what kind of wire that is. So, Let's get started. I've got my um, soldering iron up to temperature and I'm going to do these vines um, and I'm going to start with these 10 millimeter jump rings. These are just cheap jump rings. I got them on Amazon. Um, it's a question that comes up a lot about do you need a specific kind of metal? You don't technically need a specific kind of metal um, as far as like just cheap jewelry wear goes. Um, this is pre-tinned wire, um, which means that the solder sticks to it better um, and it um, supposedly you can patina it. Um, I actually have not had luck on that front, but I haven't really tried hard. So to get started, what I do is I take a thin um, piece of glass. This is, I believe, two millimeter thick, and I'm just going to line up how this is gonna look. So I'm gonna do it like that. I'm using the glass behind it to support the jump ring so that it doesn't fall off, which happens a lot um, if you're doing this because, eh, it's sticking to me, because the heat, you don't have a whole lot of um, contact space here and so the heat just makes the jump ring come right off. Center that a little bit better. I'm just gonna take a dot, hold it on there for a second. I didn't quite get enough. So there's a dot, hold it on there. It's okay if it runs off. We're gonna fix that later. And the key to doing this is tapping. I just kind of tap it into place. Now I'm gonna turn it over. And I'm going to position the top of it on this glass so that it, again, hopefully doesn't fall off. Now this is the part where you run the risk of it falling off um, because I'm basically reheating it um, and it could just turn all the solder to liquid which makes the jump ring fall off and you have to start over. <laughs> okay. Normally I don't get quite so much in the center like this but I'm just going to top it down. Oh no! You don't want that to happen. <laughs> Good thing you can clean it up. All right. I'm just going to make it pretty. I'm going to keep turning it, tapping it, add a little bit more. See if I can even it out a bit. All right, I'm happy with how that looks. So now, since I am attaching these as a vine, I'm going to put a chain in between them. I also have to attach a jump ring to the tip of this. And I don't like just attaching it like this. Instead, I feel like it looks better if you cut about a third of this out. Or I guess that would maybe be a quarter. <laughs> there we go. Take my glass again. Get some flux on there. I think I might've cut too much off, did I? Yeah, that's okay. All right. Now the nice thing about doing two different contact points is if you accidentally heat up one, the other side will hold it into place so it won't fall off as easily. Just tapping it in there. Okay. Now we will turn it. Got a fuzzy in there. A little bit more solder on there. There we go. Tapping that into place. See if we can clean this up a bit. I don't really like how clunky it looks. Get in there, clean that up. You can tap the sides. Even it out there. Oh, I tapped that one too much. <laughs> okay. 
All right. So you can see that is now on there. All right, now we'll switch to the wire so you don't have to watch me do all of these. These are Monstera leaves from my um, pattern set that you can get at glassypatterns.com. Then take my pre-tinned wire, and this is what I use. It's an empty solder roll. This is what I use to bend the wire to get it to the shape that I want. All right, so what I do is I grab this real tight. And I wrap it around and pull. So now I've got a nice U shape. We'll cut that off, trim up this side and see how we like it. I'm gonna widen it a bit because I don't like how um, narrow it looks. Okay, tuck this side in a little bit more. What do we think about that? Ew, no. <laughs> we gotta take more off the sides. How does that look? That looks pretty even. Sorry if my hands are covering up the screen. Ah, okay. All right, so I think that is going to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and flux the tips of this. And I'm not liking how this side is looking. Nope, now it's too, hmm. we're getting there. Sometimes it takes a while to get it perfect. There we go, that looks good. Okay, so we just gotta line it up with the center of the leaf. <clears throat> Grab my soldering, or solder. I have tried to solder with the wire before on accident, that didn't work out very well. <laughs> I'm just gonna tap and hold. Yep, so now it's attached to that wire. And that's gonna hold it in place, so I don't need to worry too much about heating this side up. Tap, tap, tap. Looking pretty good. Turn it and do the other side. I really like how the thick wire um, looks, especially on these larger pieces. Just has a more sturdy, professional look, I think. All right, so see if I can flatten it a little bit on the sides. This one needs more. I have about 3,562,000 of these to do today. <laughs> you can probably see the stacks <laughs> and it's not all in the picture. This whole table is filled with glass. Eh. This one's being stubborn. But part of that's because I can't really see because the camera's in my way. <laughs> okay, I am happy with that now. Let's smooth that out. No, I'm not. I'm not happy with that. I can be a bit of a, of a perfectionist. Kind of seems like we need a little bit of flux on there now. Yeah, we gotta get some flux on there. There we go. Now let's try it. Of course, the only time I struggle with it is when I do the video. <laughs> Done. So that is how I do it with pre-tinned wire.